Good morning YouTube, I'm Mark and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today I'm following up on my last video where I was shooting the Ranch Ferry test kit to figure out which spine arrows I wanted to use and what weight I wanted to put at the front of those arrows. Now that I've decided, I went ahead and ordered the arrow shafts. So these are Victory Vaps 300 uh, spine arrow shafts. And today I'm going to be starting the build on these arrows. I'm going to show you all the steps in that process. All right, so right here I've got one of the test arrows that I made. It's already got the insert on and the knocks and no fletchings. And so I can use this to figure out how long I want my arrows to be. And all I'm gonna do is for all 12 of these new arrows, I'm simply gonna line up the knocks and I'm gonna mark where I wanna take off part of the arrow. All right, so now I got all the arrows marked. It's time to cut the tops off. Now they make some fancy tools to cut your arrows that are like you know, like a little bench, uh, like a miter saw, uh, but a miniature version of it. And yeah, they'll cut them pretty square. Uh, I don't have one, so I'm just going to be using a simple angle grinder uh, with a cutoff. Tool. And, um, you know, you might think that that's not good enough because it's not going to get it quite as square as you want. But the fact of the matter is that none of these ways of cutting will get it perfectly square. So after we cut it off, we're going to use a squaring tool to square up the tips before we put the broadheads on. All right, so most of these are cut uh, pretty close to the size they need to be, but there's a hair that needs to be removed. As you can see, the green one's the new one. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, I actually realized that where I'm doing this, there's a little groove I can rotate the arrow really well. So I'm actually gonna try and get as close to uh, the line as possible using the angle grinder, and then I'll go inside and do the squaring. All right, I've got all 12 of these cut to length. And I just wanted to mention that when you're cutting these to length, when you're doing the last little bit like I was doing, and you're just shaving down that last millimeter, just make sure that you constantly check how long it is. Because once you take too much off, obviously, you're pretty screwed. So measure twice, cut once. All right, guys, we're back here in the hunting lodge, and I just finished uh, cutting these arrows down. And as you can see right here, I have the um, this is the insert slash outsert system that I'll be using so the inserts are already in the arrow and this is the outsert um, now you'd think it's just time to glue these in once you cut the arrows the problem is if the arrow is not perfectly straight or uh, square at the end there's a tiny bit of wiggle in that uh, in that insert and when that impacts bone or something like that, it's going to cause that insert to torque one side or the other. And then you're not driving straight through the bone anymore. So it can really cause a lot of deflections as it passes through an animal. So to make sure that doesn't happen, I have a quick little trick that we can use to square up all of these arrows. And then we're going to glue these inserts in. Now you can go on Amazon and buy a squaring jig, which honestly is probably better than what I'm going to do. But... They're like 25 bucks and every single tool involved in this process is like 25 bucks. And if I bought all of them, I'd be out a lot of money. Maybe you have more money than me and you want to do that. And if you do, you can go down into the description. Uh, I'll put a link to one of those tools. But what I'm going to do 
is simply I found a corner here in the kitchen. I taped a little bit of uh, sandpaper to the wall and I got a Swanson square that I can push right against the wall there. Laid a little bit of tape right here and that's just to protect the arrow so it's not scratching against this metal surface. And then we can just put the arrow right in that groove, hold it flush against the wall, and just rotate it. And that's going to sand off a little bit of material off the top and square it off. Now you don't just want to do this uh, until you feel like it's good enough. We're going to create a little system. So we're going to take a Sharpie and right on the tip of the arrow we're going to cover it with Sharpie and you won't be able to see it on camera but it makes it like dark and shiny on the top and there's a reason that we want that because as we start to sand off the tip you'll be able to see where it hasn't sanded yet just check it regularly and once you've got it nice and square you won't be able to see any of that sharpie on there anymore All right, there we go you guys won't be able to see it but I promise you that that one is square so I'm going to do the rest of them and then we're going to be ready to put inserts in alright guys so the next step in setting up your arrow you're going to stick your insert into the tip and I just have the insert in there not the outsert because uh, obviously the part that's gluing into the arrow is the insert what I'm going to do is put this, bra this practice broadhead in here this is for uh, the practice head for the this is the practice head for the G5 dead meats that I'll be using a little bit this season. It has a nice sharp tip. I'm putting it on some glass and all I'm doing is spinning it and looking at the, the connection, the ferrule between the, um, the insert and the arrow. I'm spinning it and what I'm looking for is wobble. If it spins and it looks totally straight then it's good to go. This one I've already got lined up and it's spinning nice and straight so I take a sharpie and I've marked right there so I know where uh, I need to have that insert lined up when I glue it in. So I'm going to do this for every single one. And remember you have to use a different insert for each one because each insert is going to be different in each arrow. So you want to use the actual insert that's going to go into that particular arrow. So I have uh, put all the inserts in and marked where I uh, need to glue them in place. I'm going to go ahead and glue them in place, but before I do that, just for fun, I'm going to do another little test. So I'm going to screw this broadhead back in right before I glue it. And I'm going to leave the broadhead in as I glue it so that I can immediately test it afterwards as well. So I've got it where it should be. Spin it. And that looks great. No wobble there. So that's where I'm going to glue that one in place. I'm using really fancy glue. This is Gorilla Super Glue, the gel kind. I like this stuff because of two reasons. One, if I ever want to get that insert out, I can heat up the insert and this stuff deteriorates and comes apart really well. Uh, but also, I don't feel like waiting an entire day uh, just to uh, be able to shoot these things. So with this, it'll be dry. You know, I'll let it dry for like a half hour to an hour, and then I'll be able to start knock tuning these. So what we're going to do, pull the insert out. Get your super glue. But one thing that's really important is you don't want to have any glue on the tip of the insert. Because if you do that, that glue is just going to sit there um, and dry. You want to have a consistent amount of glue on each insert so that it doesn't affect the weight of the arrow too much. So we're going to apply glue on the outside of the insert and as it pushes in all that excess glue is going to get pushed right out the top and that way we should have a pretty consistent layer of glue on all of them. 
So I'm going to put glue, a good amount of glue up here at the top and right to the tip, but not around the top of the tip. And I'll put more glue than I need because, like I said, it'll squish its way down as we put it into the arrow. So we're going to rotate it. We're going to rotate it in as we go. So just twist as you go. And that way it fills in all those gaps right to the end. Then we're going to rotate, find that spot where it needs to be, right there. And then we're just going to take a paper towel and wipe off the excess. So we're going to wipe off the excess right here, just like that. There we go. And then before we put it to dry, we're just going to check again if that is spinning true, and it is, so that's good to go. Alright, so all of the 180 grain, well, part of the 180 grain inserts are um, glued in place. You'd think we'd be done, but no, we're not done, because now we need to put the outserts on it, um, and again, this is going to be a process of putting them on with the broadhead and spinning it to find out exactly where they need to be, marking it, and gluing it again. So, let's get to it. And the process is going to be exactly the same as it was before. Very good. Minimal wobble in there. So, I'm just going to mark it and I'm going to glue it right away. So with these, especially after having glued the inserts on there, there might be little burrs from the, um, the glue right around that seam. So when you put these in, you really want to make sure that you get them all the way in. And I'm not going to put very much glue on here because I, I don't need these to be on there super solid. Uh, I just really want them to, uh, to hold on uh, you know, and, and keep everything straight. So I'm just going to put a tiny ring of glue, a little dab actually. Just one running out of glue, little dab right there. And again, on the outside of that insert, because I don't want it anywhere near the threads. And I'm gonna, that's where, that's where I marked it right there. So I'm gonna put that on there and I'm gonna rotate it. Line that up like that. Give it a second just to. So just set a little bit on the inside. I'm going to wipe up the excess glue. And that should be ready to rock and roll. Just put the, the rod head in there, make sure it's good. You can even glue that down so, it, so the glue solidifies when it's a nice tight fit. And that's it. That arrow is ready for knock tuning. And it spins super straight. Perfect. So, finally got these arrows put together. This is what they look like. I got a, got a 150 grain uh, field point on there. And then the 180 grains of inserts. Um, and then I also have this test arrow that I was shooting in my last video. It's already got fletchings on it. I'm going to use this as a reference arrow. So uh, now what I'm going to do is called knock tuning. I'm going to be shooting these. I'm doing three at a time because this is honestly a pretty slow process. It'll probably take me a couple days. But anyway, they don't have fletchings on there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to shoot um, and see how they hit the target. Um, and then we're going to adjust the knocks and see if we can improve their flight. So what we're probably going to find is that like some of them are going to hit, you know, like they're going to be all over the place. like sticking in different directions and then we're going to twist the knocks and that might help that situation so let's shoot them i'll show you how they hit and then uh, we'll make adjustments from there oh and some of you guys might be thinking you know these uh 
these victory vaps are already spine aligned so why wouldn't we just set up the uh, the fletchings with that spine alignment in mind uh, or you know if you don't trust the spine alignment on them you can do the floating trick where you basically uh, put them in water uh, with a knock on either side so they're balanced um, and then put a little bit of soap in the water to break the surface tension and they'll basically spin in the water and they'll float with the heaviest part down and that's how you can find the spine and I actually tried that on the test arrow um, and then after I went out and started shooting it I actually still had to knock tune it so I'm not even going to bother with the spine alignment I'm just going straight to knock tuning if you guys want to do it that way that's of course an option but personally I didn't really have great success with it so knock tuning is the way I'm going to do it I'm doing all this with the bow that I'm going to be hunting with. Um, this is a Bowtech Carbon Icon, super lightweight, uh, short axle to axle bow. It's a really great bow to hunt with. I really love the way this thing shoots. If you want to find more information about this setup and all the components that I have on there, there's links down in the description so you can see what I got going on. All right, so first off, I'm going to shoot this, uh, um, this reference arrow, the, the test arrow that I already have fletchings on, and then we'll shoot the other ones. Now for these fletchingless ones. So I'm starting with the spine alignment logo straight up. Let's see how they hit. Let's go check it out. All right, so that's what we're working with. Honestly, they're pretty darn aligned from top to, so the left and right's actually really good. And really well in line with the, uh, with the fletched arrow. So these two are good. This guy right here is angled up a little bit. So, we'll work on this one. These two I'm pretty happy with. I'll shoot these again just to make sure that they're consistent. So these were the three that were good. This one needs work. I'm gonna shoot the fletched arrow first as our reference point. And then this is the one that was misbehaving slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that knock 90 degrees to the left. We're going to shoot it again and see if it behaves a little better. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with those. I'm going to continue this process with all my other arrows until I'm happy with uh, how they impact the target. And it's time for fletchings. What's up guys, I'm back in Miami now, but I just wanted to add real quick that right after I finished knock tuning those first arrows, a buddy of mine let me know that if I wanted to go try and take a hog off his property, I was welcome to do that. And since I was pretty good at 20 yards, I figured as long as I could get one to come within 20 yards, I could go try and shoot one. Since then, I haven't changed anything on my bow. The only thing that I've done since is that I've uh, adjusted my sight to make sure that my pins are aligned um, I've been shooting quite a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to show you that even with broadheads now, uh, you know, my, my field points and my broadheads are flying basically the same. So I'm going to launch a broadhead. I'm at 30 yards right now. I got my 3D target back there. Um, and then I'm going to send a field point right after it just so you can see that taking your time to do all these steps while you're building your arrows is really going to help uh, make them fly straight even when you got your broadheads on there.
Well, there you have it. Yeah, they're about a inch apart, but uh, either way, that's money. And in case you're wondering why they have different angles on them, it's not because of the way that they're flying, but it's because after I shot the uh, broadhead, it, the target actually fell forward, and the you can see all the dirt on here. This went into the ground, so I had to come over here and reposition it, but I left the arrow in. That's why they're not angled the same way. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If any of you are uh, getting into archery or thinking about taking it to the next level, building your own custom arrows is one way to really improve your game. Um, it allows you to really customize that arrow uh, for whatever your needs are, whether that be a really fast arrow or a heavy arrow or whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of great components out there, so make sure that you do your homework. I know I did mine, um, and really any of the components that I used on these arrows, you can't go wrong with, uh, but obviously you should do whatever you think is best. Um, and, you know, this is just a way to build these arrows and get a really great uh, result without having to buy all the crazy expensive tools and all that stuff. So, with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure that you do that now, and click that little bell uh, so that you get notifications when we put out new videos, and make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, uh, check us out on patreon.com slash swampandstomp, and there you can make just a small monthly donation that's going to help us take this channel to the next level. And on top of that, you get a bunch of extra stuff like uh, exclusive uh, content, uh, some cool merch, and you'll get a bunch of extra entries into our quarterly giveaways. So go check that out, and thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.